Hey guys, Steph, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. I am not, I am actually, I'm fine, but I'm just overreacting a little bit because I hate filming these videos because I just know by the end of this video, I'm gonna look bad. Like right now I don't look good. I've got belly and fake tan on, I'm tired, my hair's a little bit greasy. I'm doing like the everything bath later on today, which is why I decided to film this video. And still, I know I'm going to look worse because today we're doing a full face of products that I hate. Like the worst makeup products that I've tried over the last year or so. And uh, yeah, combine them all together, realistically, unless some sort of miracle happens in the universe where all the worst products come together and create a flawless makeup look, realistically, it's just gonna look bad. So uh, I'm, I'm basically here just to, just to look crap for you all and you can all just laugh at me. You will just laugh at me. So yeah, however bad you think I'm looking right now, it's about to get a whole lot worse. Like, comment, subscribe, all that rubbish, and let's get into the video. I'm sorry in advance, face, and also I'm really sorry because I popped this spot on my jaw. Never pop a spot on your jaw because they always just go bigger and they don't actually get better, they just get worse. And I don't really have a proper concealer to use today. So that's good, thought that one through. Uh, let's do the video. Let's just get stuck into it. May as well, really. May as well. Okay. Also, like, it, it's kind of silly, the fact that I feel like I need to address this. Some people, when I've done these videos before, have been very upset that I've not liked one of their favorite products. And if you like it, then cool. Don't worry about if I like it or not, but if there's something here that you love and I hate, I am I'm gonna say I'm sorry. I'm actually not sorry. I, it's just a product that I don't like. So please don't be upset. It's, it's not that deep. Yeah, and, and the last time I checked, I don't think I haven't, haven't checked actually. I don't think these products have feelings or like any brain capacity. You never know though. So sorry products in advance if you can hear me. Um, really sorry, it's not your fault that you crap. Okay, uh, so we're gonna start off with this stuff here that I got from Timu. And to be fair, I've actually had a lot of good products from Timu before, like makeup products, but this, was really, really bad. I tried it out in a recent video. It's their Lake Rain Halo Glow Liquid Face Filter. And when I use this, not only is it like very, very dark, it did not look like this on the website, but um, it basically went all patchy on my skin. So um, we'll see if it does that again. Like I'm very open to, you know, trying these products again and seeing if they do work, but I just don't have the highest hopes. So yeah, and obviously this is basically a dupe for Charlotte Tilbury, except the really bad version. So I've already moisturized my skin a while ago, but yeah, this stuff, from what I remember, which my memory's not bad, that bad, I used this stuff a couple of weeks ago. It just did not blend out, looked really patchy, like literally here. It's gone patchy already, brilliant. And yeah, it just, it just was not good. None of these products are good, that's why they're in this video. My ears look very... These, these ears, I'm leaving them like it. I don't care, but uh, yeah, my ears look really nice. It's like every so often I look at it and I'm like, like what's that? What is, what is that? Okay, so for brows, literally the most pointless brow gel in existence. And this isn't just a call out collection. I mean, it kind of is, collection. Sorry, I love you as a brand, but this sucks. Um, but there's so many brands that do brow gels like this. And I thought we kind of left them in like the 2000s, like the early 2000s, because they, they just do nothing. Like I've even tried to use them to like stick down some baby hairs. Doesn't even do that. They're literally just, it's like putting water essentially through your eyebrows. Just like makes you feel as though you're doing something. Yeah, it just, it just does nothing. There's no hold to it. And it is the Vitamin Fix Brow Gel. But I think they also did another one very similar that just wasn't part of the um, Vitamin Fix range. But yeah, like it, it gets them into like a bit more of a uniform position, but it does not hold them. No matter how much I put on, and I have tried, trust me, all these products I've tried to make work, whether I'm doing it like in a video or just like in my own time, it just does not hold anything down. So big fat note to this guy. Moving on to another recent discovery that I was not happy to discover. And I was really gutted about this because I was actually quite excited about trying this. It's the Lasting Finish um, Foundation from Rimmel and it's their uh, Hyaluronic Acid Boost 2% Niacinamide one. I feel like I actually used to like the original version of this back in the day, but when I tried this out in a video, probably like a couple weeks ago, just really was not a fan. I've tried it a few other occasions and it kind of did the same thing, but let's see. I'm gonna use a different brush actually. Let's see what it's like now. Maybe 
with the terrible base underneath, like the primer. Maybe it'll work some magic. There are so many cat hairs on this brush. I swear Michael and Pepe, like when I'm asleep, they just like come into this room and just eat all of my brushes or something. This might be a bit too dark for me, but it is what it is. Right, the coverage was good. Coverage was really, really good. Smells nice, smells just like a standard Rimmel um, foundation. To me, it just looked really matte and like drying and kind of like textury on my skin. Like at first, it goes on really, really well. I think even in the video, I was like quite excited about it. I was like, oh, coverage looks quite good. And then as it sort of like set on my face, it did just look really dry. And I don't mean it looked matte because I know some people like matte foundations. It's not personally my thing, but that's fine. It, it just looked like weirdly textured and almost like kind of chalky, which is not what I'm usually after. Like, you know, when I'm putting something all over my face, do not quite want to resemble a piece of chalk. Yeah, I feel like it's starting to do it. God, that literally, can you see? Like, I know I've got like a little bit of the flippy flops here, but if I put my brush there, look at that spot. Oh my God, if I'm filming the video like this the whole time, that's why. I literally have no self-restraint when it comes to spots. I'm just like, get it. My brain's like, no, Steph, it's not gonna, it's not gonna make any difference. It's gonna make it worse. You've got so many products you can use to actually get rid of that spot in like a day or two. No, get it. Yeah, like you might not be able to tell as well until I start to powder everything down, but I'm gonna get super close up to you. But it's like around here, my skin just looks like it's got more pores. I don't know, I know some of you are gonna think that I'm being really picky and maybe I am, but also I like to have a flawless base. I have everything, I feel like if you've got a flawless base, and I'm not talking like if you have like flawless skin, I just mean if your base is like doing everything it should be, then even if, I don't know, your eye makeup's a little bit off or whatever it is, it does still tie the look together a little bit more. So when I'm looking at like foundations, I'm very, very picky. So that just means that if I recommend a foundation, then as far as like my opinion goes, you know it's good. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to, wait, this is the wrong product. I grabbed the wrong product, hold that thought. Okay, got it. Sorry, it literally looks like the exact same product. So this is from Trini London. I got a lot of stick for apparently not using this product correctly. It is their Just A Touch Concealer. And I just really, I'm trying to stick my fingers in this, but my nails are in the way. I just really was not a fan of this stuff. I feel like, I know it's supposed to be kind of like more like natural looking, but for me, I just found that it just looked kind of cakey and creasy and didn't really do much for me. Like, don't get me wrong, I'll take a nice little subtle concealer. If you know, like no makeup makeup days, if I just want a little tiny, tiny bit of coverage. But this was more so like a textural kind of thing. It just, it just did not sit on my face properly, but it has been a long old time since I used this. So I'm, I'm like, I'm open-minded. Like, I know the video is titled worst products ever or products I hate or whatever it is, but I'm, I'm always keen to accept, you know, change in people, in products, could look worse. Doesn't actually look as bad as I was expecting it to, which is a good thing. Okay, we're now gonna move on to, and I'm really sorry, Barry M. They do so many great products. By far one of the worst products I've tried probably in the last year. And it's something as simple as a contour. And I love a contour, I really do. But this is was just really bad. So there's like a cream, on the bottom, but it's kind of like a moussey, almost like silicone-y, professional sort of cream. It just did nothing for me. Let me grab a different brush. I have a different brush. Michael, Pepe, did you eat this brush as well? Let's do this one. But like this, there's no mirror in this, I'm just staring into the abyss. It just looked really ashy, and yet it has taken off any makeup that I had on my cheeks here. So let me try and go in with some more, just to see if I can add more coverage. But like, even like the way that the brush picks it up, and I've tried it with a sponge, tried it with my fingers, I've tried it with like patting motions. It just really was not a good product. And I don't even know if they still do this or not. But even like stippling it in, it just looks so muddy and just like does not sit on your skin at all. And like I said, like whenever you try and blend things out, it, it just does absolutely nothing. Let me turn on the macro for you. Look really bad. I'll try and like press in whatever was kind of left on my foundation brush, but it doesn't even like give you much of a like 
like, uh, wow, I'm a fish. I'm just a fish. I, uh, why am I doing makeup? I'm just a fish. It doesn't actually like, give you any real pigment. It's just like, if you want to ruin your makeup, then use this. It's great for that. But like, it just does nothing. It just looks really, really muddy. And I'll use the um, powder in a second. But now we're going to move on to powder. And this is lost. This was something that, okay, didn't really, really, really hate. It's all right. God, that contour's terrible. It's all right for like just an on the go setting blotting powder. But all over my face, it kind of gave me like a weird finish, but I wasn't fully sure if it was down to like the foundation or whatever that I was wearing. So I'm gonna try it with this, but it like, I'm only using a tiny amount, but it kind of almost looks like shimmery on the skin. I haven't even said what it was yet, have I? So Laura Mercier Real Flawless uh, Luminous Perfecting Pressed Powder. And I get the luminosity, but it's not like, it is more of like a kind of shimmery luminosity. Look at that. Look at that. No. Yeah, and you can see I literally used, I'll show you how much powder I was using. I was doing that and then kind of like waving it off. I'm using the tiniest amount of powder and for my under eyes, yeah, it just looks like textured and a bit weird. And it's even starting to doing it with, my words are not wording today. It's even started to do it like the found, give me a sec. I'm gonna sneeze now. What I said that the foundation does, it started to do it now. I'm gonna get real close to you again. Like, can you see? I haven't put any powder or anything here, but it just looks, yeah, like a, a weird kind of texture on my skin, which I don't often get from many, if any, foundations. Let's set down the rest of my face. Fish and a rice cake, and then fish, fish and a rice cake. That guy's wham now. Like there might be other little factors that have come into play. He may no longer eat fish and a rice cake, but he's wham now. So maybe, maybe there's something in that. Maybe I should go on the fish and a rice cake diet. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, no to this. Again, using a very, very small amount of powder and just kind of building it up. But look, look at my chin. But look. Weird, weird texture. Weird texture around here. Weird texture on my nose. Weird texture. Okay, we're gonna move back in into the Barry M chisel cheeks. And I'm gonna go in with the powder. Like, it's very, very messy. You can see that there. Which isn't the end of the world. Like, I can still really like a product, even if it is a bit messy. But it's just, again, just a weird color. And it just, just looked like super gray. And I think because, I mean, realistically, it's probably the, the cream contour that I hate the most. But on top of it, it, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Like, they're just working against each other. And it's just, yeah, like the colour's just weird and a bit muddy. And it's just, yeah, it's just not, not into it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to be using are these two products here from Ciate. And it wasn't that they necessarily did anything like super bad to my makeup. They just barely did anything. And I've tried these out both underneath powder and on top of powder. And I have found the best way to get any sort of pigment from them is to use them on top of powder, but they're basically the Dewy Bronze and Dewy Blush Glossy Cheek Tints. Now I get it, it's a tint, it's not gonna be super in your face, but for me, there was literally like nothing going on with this, like at all. What I'm gonna do, very rogue choice of brush here, but I'm gonna pop some of the bronzer stuff on, just on my cheeks, and then I'm gonna blend it out with my foundation brush. But like, I've even used this when I'm not really wearing any makeup just to kind of see like, oh, maybe it just adds like a, a, like a slight sheen that you can only really notice like when you're not really wearing any makeup. Cat hair just flew right on my nose then. But like, look, it's added a little, I get the gloss, it's added a little bit of a sheen to my skin, but it's just, it just disappears. And again, I've tried it with a sponge, tried it with my fingers. I just don't really see much of a difference at all. Let's go with a little bit more. Like you can see I'm putting it on and it's also a tiny little tube. So I'm kind of like, if I have to use this much product just to get any kind of payoff, not picking my nose, kind of am. Just got a cat hair up there somewhere, digging it out. But yeah, if you've got to use this much and it's in this tiny little tube and Ciate is not like the cheapest brand in the world. I'm just like, what do you do? Make it more pigmented or, or give me a bigger tube at least because I don't hate the finish. Again, if you're doing like super natural makeup and you want a bit of like a glossiness, actually no, I, right now I do absolutely hate the finish of that because that just looks wet. Like, bleh. We're gonna need to add some more powder in a minute. But first, before I add more powder, I'm gonna go in with the blush as well, which I might regret because I might literally just end up with the shiniest cheeks in existence. But again, add in 
Like more than I would probably choose to use, but it's only because I know that it doesn't really have any color payoff. Like it's not even like it's stuck in the brush or anything. It's just, it's given me a tiny bit of color on my cheeks. But again, it's also made me look soggy. Don't get it. If you've tried, if you've tried any of these products and you think I'm using them wrong, or if there's like a weird technique that you figured out or something, please let me know because I've just not been able to figure out like any of these products of like ways to make them work. And normally I'm pretty good with that. Normally like if I'm doing a video and something goes wrong, I know how to kind of fix things. With these, I'm just like, it just doesn't look good on me. Next is another product from Collection. I'm really sorry guys. I'm really, really sorry because they are a great brand, but it's this stuff here, the like diamond, yeah, diamond shine highlighter in the shade Shine Bright. The Fenty one, I'm also not a fan of, but I think I actually passed the Fenty one on to a friend. And I also didn't like the Lottie London version that they did. I think I preferred the Lottie London one out of like all of them, but they're basically like this just super, super glittery highlighter. And if it was for your body, like, I mean, even still, you can't really see anything, but even on my body, it's just it's just not kind of giving what I want it to. But yeah, for all over my face, this stuff is just, it's just not good for me. Like if I pop some of that on there, I just, I just don't understand in what world, unless you're doing like festival makeup or some really kind of like editorial sort of makeup, or you're using this as an eyeshadow, to which case like market this as an eyeshadow. I just do not understand like who wears this? If you guys do, again, fair enough. I would actually like to see you rocking it because I'm sure there's people out there that do and that look 10 out of 10, but it just it just adds more texture to my skin. It just looks like the color is a bit kind of, it's silvery, but not in a flattering way. And it just, yeah, it just looks textured. The glitter goes everywhere and I just don't like it. I'm like, what is that? What is that? The fish on my head right now is the least concerning thing about me. Okay, next for setting spray, I actually have two. And it's both for the same reason because I actually don't mind either of these. However, nine times out of 10, the pumps on both of these just do not work. And it's just an absolute ball ache to, to use them. This one's a bit more annoying because it's so expensive. This is like 36 pounds or something. Like one of the most expensive um, setting sprays that I've personally ever used. It's the Laura Mercier one. It's their translucent pure setting spray. And it like, it squirts. And I don't know if I've got a dud. I'm fully thinking that maybe I do just have duds, but it, it, just, I can't even show you. Will I be able to show you like this? Can, if I block my face off, you probably still can't see that, but it just like squirts. And it like, yeah, you just like missed it from so far away and you feel like you're kind of being attacked by like a Nerf gun, not a Nerf gun, they've got the things, you know what I mean? And then we have the beauty crop one, which yeah, again, just barely ever works, even though I do actually quite like this spray. Oh. It's working for me now. Okay, well that's fine. If this then continues to work, then this goes out of the video, but this one just never seems to work for me. Like it just, it just squirts all over my face. So not a fan of that. Now I look even more soggy. We're now gonna move into eyes and I have this eyeshadow primer from ABH. I completely forgot about this. This actually made my eyeshadow go on like way worse than if I was just using a concealer or something like that. And also it's just so white and I'm, you know, I've got my fake tan on, well, bits of it, but I'm, I'm like, I'm a pretty, in the, in the grand scheme of things, like I'm a pretty pale girl, but it just looks stupid. Like I know you're gonna be putting eyeshadow over the top of this, but does that mean that I then have to fully cover my entire lid with like a matching beige powder or something? Because it, it does just look so extreme. And I believe there's only one color as well, which is a bit of a shame because if it was like more of a sheer kind of eye primer, then I get it if you only have one shade. Or even if it was like just somewhere in the middle, like a medium sort of shade, that kind of works for a lot of people, then again, I would get it. But even for someone like me, it's just, it's just too pale. Like it just looks so stupid. And the worst part is that it really doesn't work well with eyeshadows that like I used, where did I use it the other day? Do I have it here? Oh, I used my favorite Huda Beauty palette, the grunge one, and it made the eyeshadows look really bad. And I'm like, that's one of my favorite palettes. So we're going in with one of my least favorite palettes. This you might be thinking is the Be Perfect Carnival palette. It's not, it's another Timu Jobby. It does look very, very similar, but the pigmentation is just so bad. It's like one of those products that looks like it could be the most perfect dupe. All the shades look incredible. And then you put it on your eyes and you're like, this is why it cost me five pounds. So let's just do something 
a little bit of fun. What, what color? Okay, I'm wearing red lipstick, so we can't go too crazy. I might just do something kind of simple, a little sunset eye situation. I'm gonna go in with the shade Shuffle, and you pick it up and you're like, yeah, somewhat pigmented, okay, surely this can't be too bad. And then you just start to blend it. And again, I'm very curious to see how it works with this ABH primer. But yeah, okay, sorry, keep forgetting to put the macro on. Look, like, just looks really, really dry already. And there's not really much staying power to this either, like the eye primer, I mean. And so yeah, this is one of those times where I was like hoping that somewhere in the universe, these two products that were bad would just kind of work together. But yeah, no. I'm gonna go in with Keen, which is this kind of yellowy shade that does not want to pick up on my brush. Like, it's just, it's just giving nothing. It's just giving, like, slight jaundice. Yeah. Mwah. It's making weird noises now. My disdain for some of these products, just Mwah. Let's try a little bit of lit. So we're going to some slightly brighter shades now. I know sometimes yellows and everything can be a little bit more tricky, but I'm gonna try and put this in the center. And if, if you really like super pastel colors that are like 10% opacity, you might love this. When I look at a palette like this and I've tried the original, this is why a lot of the time the original are better. Um, I'm just like, you really are just, you're a fake. Just as I thought. Nothing at all. Like you can see it's there just about, but like it just barely shows up, which is very sad. Cause you know me, I love a dupe. Blend that out a corner off a little bit. And also, you get loads of fallout from it as well. I'm like, from where? Where was the pigment? Because it certainly is not on my eyeballs. Okay, we're now moving in to the worst eyeliner I think I've ever tried. This is from The Body Shop. It's their Wake Up Cool Liquid Eyeliner. And it's got the worst freaking applicator you could imagine. Again, like if this was something from like the early 2000s, I get it. I was in the early 2000s. I understand what we, we had to work with, but we're just not. And if I remember correctly, this also cracked a lot. It just, it just was not good. It's like the thickest applicator and the formula itself kind of bleeds everywhere. And like, I'm not the, I'm fully not the best person at doing winged eyeliner. Some people literally go and they're done. And I just think you're a wizard, but I, I can make it work. I can usually make a lot of liners work, but this one just, it's so difficult to use. It gets like all in your lashes and then they get kind of dried down and clumpy. It's like really streaky as well. Yeah, just really not a good liner. Next is mascara and this is a fairly like new release. It's from KVD and it's their full sleeve tubing mascara. And I was quite excited to try it. I saw loads of people talking about it. Granted, they were ads. But when I tried it, I was like, is that it? Again, not cheap. I was expecting a little bit more, but it just did not do anything major to my lashes, to be honest. It coats them to begin with, but then it just kind of makes them look a bit more spidery. And I am, I'm quite a big fan of a spidery lash, but it has to be like a separated spidery lash. Whereas this just kind of makes it look like I'm applying just like a really old mascara that I should have thrown away like six months ago. But yeah, it's like the brush is nice and I feel like the formula could be nice, but for the price, that's kind of mostly why I'm just like really not into this, this mascara because you can get so many like super affordable, like two, three pound mascaras that are way better than this. And for the hype, it, it's just, yeah, it was not, it's one of the worst mascaras that I've tried out for a while. Apart from though, this one was pretty bad as well. Again, for the price, but it also just wasn't that good. The Byredo one. Remember this? Like terrible. I might even do it on my other eye in a second to, to show you guys. But yeah, this is another one. Just do not waste your money. Then last but not least for lips before I do go and do my other eye. This again is horrendously expensive. And am I dogging on it because it is so expensive? A little bit, like it kind of hurts my soul how pricey this is. I think it's like 76 pounds or something. Mental. It's the Libaton um, liquid lipstick. It's like their vinyl one. And honestly, I've got a lot of other like vinyl sort of like shiny liquid lipsticks that do actually last on your lips. They don't bleed. They don't do anything like that. You can actually like eat with them on like the Maybelline ones. I forget the name of them, but they're in like the like square kind of packaging. They're really, really good and you get a really nice finish on them. This was just a big fat no. It's just like sticky. And I mean, let's face it. The only reason why people are buying this, in my opinion anyway, is because it's Christian Louboutin. Like, I don't think people are buying this because it's like, oh my God, it's the best lip product ever. You are lying to yourself, my friends. But like, the colors are okay. The applicator's nice. 
but it's also like a little bit streaky. So unless you get like all the pigment on your lips, some areas kind of look a little bit more pinky than they do red and it, it just does not stay on your lips at all. Like you're much better off just getting a red liquid lipstick that you love and just putting a gloss over it. There's just nothing to it. Just the fancy packaging. Like that's, that's literally it. And it's not even glass. It's like, it's plastic packaging. It, yeah, it looks interesting, but you know that like, I don't know, ZC or Flower Nose or some other random brands, probably like a, some sort of like Korean brand or something, you know they've already done this. So it's not like, there's lots of brands now that are creating like crazy packaging. So it's kind of, I don't really see, I don't really see the appeal. I mean, I got it in TK Maxx. So, I mean, I was a little bit mental. I think I paid like 30-ish pounds or something for this, but it's because I just wanted to try it. And even then, paying that much for it, I'm still like, what a waste of money. Okay, my friends, I'm going to go and do the other eye off camera, sort my hair out. All I can see is that like fallout from my eyeshadow there. And I'll show you guys the finished look. Okay. Okay, guys, this is the finished look. Very shiny. And I keep getting Lipstick on my teeth, no matter how many times I do this, you can see how many times I've done it. Yeah, this is the finished look. What do you think? I'll be honest, okay, I'm gonna be very nice here. Uh, just in case these products do have feelings. Do you have feelings? Yeah, it's okay, oh, sorry. Um, the base, I feel like could look worse if I had, not not the cheeks, the cheeks that look terrible. They're super shiny and oily. The actual like, this part of my base, it's, it's probably the best part of like the whole makeup. So thank you for that Rimmel. Sorry I was saying horrible things about you. Still don't love the foundation at all. It's still, still remaining in this video, but it's the best of a bad bunch. There's your prize. But yeah, um, the eyeshadow, it's like, if that's what you're going for, okay, but no pigment whatsoever. Don't know if you can see, I've got a little eyebrow hair that's like, they're sneaking their way down. I'm just gonna leave it there. That's this, this just shows that the eyebrow gel does not do anything and, yeah, I mean, overall, just uh, this is a full face of my least favorite product. So we kind of have the result that I sort of thought we would in a sense that I hate this. Absolutely hate it. But yeah, anyway, guys, I'm very, very excited for my everything bath. Scrub off the tan, do the face masks, scrub the hair like 87 times. So I'm gonna go and do that. If you guys enjoyed this video, as always, please give it a, a big thumbs up and subscribe if you do wanna see more of me because I upload all the damn time. Let me know if there's any other sort of like challenges you guys want me to do. Is this considered a challenge? I don't know, but uh, it was challenging to make it work. So let me know if you guys want me to do any other sort of challenges because I can absolutely do that. But I'm going to leave it here. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. My spot and I say goodbye. Uh, bye bye. Say goodbye, spot. Uh, bye bye. Bye bye.